In this video, we will walk through the IDE of Delphi 7. If you decided to install Delphi 7 instead of Delphi 2010, you must watch this tutorial. I want you to make notes, and if you are going to use Delphi 7 as your environment to do these lessons, I also want you to open it and to see if you can identify the different parts of the IDE. You must know the IDE better than you know your best friend. It will also help a great deal in assignments, tests and exams if you know how to access and find the different features of the IDE. And it will also help you to finish your projects in time. Even if you are not going to use Delphi 2010, I want you to also watch the video about the Delphi 2010 IDE to compare the two IDEs. I will start Delphi 7 by clicking this icon here in my taskbar. When Delphi 7 starts up, it immediately opens a project called Project 1. Everything that you see here on the screen is Delphi 7's Integrated Development Environment or IDE. We are going to walk through this IDE and you will see where to find all the features to create your projects. Let's start right at the top. This is Delphi 7's title bar. The title bar displays the version of Delphi that you are using as well as the name of your project. In this case Delphi 7 and Project 1. Later you will learn that it is a good practice to assign proper and descriptive names to your Delphi projects. When you rename the project, your new name will replace Project 1 in the title bar. Just like most Windows based applications, Delphi 7 has a menu bar. Some of the menus we find in the menu bar are the file menu and the edit menu. The file menu has a list of commands we use to create files, open files, save files, print files and so on. The edit menu enables us to do editing in our projects like cut, copy and paste. There are many other menus available that you can explore in your own time or you can learn about them as we progress through these lessons. Under the menu bar, here on the left, you will find the speed bar. The speed bar contains many little buttons with pictures on them. These buttons enable you to perform the same tasks as with the commands in the menus. Let me demonstrate that. I will click the file menu to drop it down. Here I have a menu command called save all. When I click on that, a dialog window pops up to enable me to save my files. I will now cancel this operation. I can perform the same operation using one of the buttons in the speed bar. If I hover my mouse over this button, you can see a yellow text block that indicates that this is the save all button. If I click this button, it pops up the same dialog window that we saw before. I can therefore also save all my files using the save all button in the speed bar. Instead of dropping down the file menu and clicking the save command, you can directly click on the save all button in the speed bar. This is faster and more convenient and that is why they call it the speed bar. Here next to the speed bar is the component palette. The component palette hosts all the visual components that we use in our projects. All these components are organized in tabs. The components that we will use often are contained in the standard tab. In this tab, you will find components like a button, an edit, and a label and so on. Another tab that we use often is the additional tab. In the additional tab, you can find components like the bitmap button, image, and shape. There are many other tabs like Win32, System, Data Access and so on. You can also use the left and right scrollers on the right hand side of the component palette to navigate to other tabs. Like I mentioned before, when you start Delphi 7 a new project is added to the IDE. The primary design surface of the project is a form. This is the form. Now I will demonstrate how to add components to your form using the components from the standard tab. Here in the standard tab of the component palette, find the button component and click on it. When you click on a component in the component palette, it will be selected. You can see that the button component is now pressed in. That indicates to me that it is currently selected. While it is selected, I can move my mouse pointer to the form and there where I want to place a button, I simply click on the form. Let's try that again, but this time with an edit. Find the edit component in the component palette. Select it by clicking on it. 
Move your mouse pointer to the form and click where you want to place it. Now, to move your components to a different location, you simply click on the component you want to move and drag it into another location. Like this. Here, on the left side of Delphi 7's IDE, you will find the Object Tree View in a separate window. The Object Tree View displays a hierarchical list of names of the components that you use in your project. The first name that we see here is Form 1. That is the default name of the first form in your project. Indented under Form 1 is the name of the button we just placed on the form. It is named Button 1 by default. Directly under Button 1 is Edit 1. That is the default name of the edit that we placed on the form. Notice that the names of Button 1 and Edit 1 are indented. They are children of Form 1. In other words, Form 1 is the container or parent. When you click on the component's name in the object tree view, the object will be selected. For example, here I click on Edit 1, and here on the form I can see that Edit 1 is now selected. Notice the little black boxes on the edges and the corners of Edit 1. We call these boxes Handles. That's an indication that Edit 1 is currently selected. I can also select the component by directly clicking on it. Here I click on button 1. Again, notice the little black boxes or handles. Also notice that the button's name is now highlighted in the object tree view. I will now move Edit 1 and Button 1 lower down the form. Here, under the object tree view is another window of Delphi 7's IDE, called the Object Inspector. The Object Inspector lists all the characteristics or properties of a component that you select in the IDE. Here on the top of the object inspector, we can see that the currently selected component is our form, named Form 1. This indicates to us that all the properties listed in the Properties tab of the object inspector belong to Form 1. Notice that these properties are ordered in alphabetical order to make it easier to find. Every property has a name and a value. For example, Caption is the name of this property. Next to the name, we see the value, in this case, Form 1. The Caption property sets the title that must display in the form's title bar. In this case, the value of the form's Caption property is Form 1. Therefore, Form 1 displays in the title. When we scroll down, we find the long list of properties that we can set to change the appearance of the form. When you select another component, that component's name will appear in the Object Inspector. Here I select Button 1, and here we see Button 1's properties are now listed in the Object Inspector. If I now select Edit 1, the name in the Object Inspector changes to Edit 1. To change a property, click in the cell next to the property's name. The Edit is still currently selected. Notice the handles. To change the text displayed in the edit, scroll to the text property and type the text. Here I will type my name. See how the text is added to the edit as I'm typing. To change properties for the button, I must first select it. I want to change the text displayed on the button. But the button doesn't have a text property, it has a caption property. To change the caption, you simply type a new value for the caption property. For demonstration purposes, I will change it to something like Press Enter. See how the button changes as I'm typing. We can also change many other properties. Here, I scroll down to the width property of the button. If I know the exact width for the button, I can type it here. At the moment, the width is 75. You can also adjust the width of the button by simply dragging the left or the right edge of the button. While you are dragging the edge of the button, notice the yellow text block that indicates the dimensions. Also notice that the width property value changed from 75 to 105. You will set all your properties in the Properties tab of the Object Inspector. But the Object Inspector also has an Events tab. The names of the events are also listed in alphabetical order in the Events tab. An event is an action that is triggered in response to an interaction by a user or a process. For example, when a user clicks on a button, its onClick event will be triggered. 
Programmers write instructions or code to dictate what must happen when these events are triggered. You will learn more about events and event handlers in a future tutorial in this video series. Now I will move the button and the edit back to the top of the form. I now want to adjust the height of the form. Here behind the form we see a hidden window. I will click on this strip that is visible under the form. The code editor or source editor window is brought to the front. The code editor window is where you will write code for your form as well as for the components on your form. To view the form again, simply click on the title on the top to bring it to the front. And that was a quick look at Delphi 7's IDE. In the next video, I will do the same demonstration in the Lazarus IDE. If you are not going to use Lazarus, you can skip the next video. But please do not skip the Delphi 2010 video after that. In that video, I am going to walk through the Delphi 2010 IDE and of course that is what I will use in future lessons and demonstrations. It is important that you see the differences between the IDEs of Delphi 7 and Delphi 2010. I'll talk to you again in the next video.